Hello, everyone. I'm happy to see you here. At least there uh, are growth in the people. Um, basically, I'm not pitching any project, and I'm not uh, trying to sell you something, and uh, hopefully not to bullshit you. But I'm speaking on, uh, I will speak on a soft subject, maybe on values, actually, and anarchism and values. And I think it's uh, an important discussion. I don't know why, actually, we lost those discussions in the industry. Uh, we began with those, but those were disappearing. So comparing, for example, to AI, you have a lot of discussion about the ethics of AI. Uh, a long time ago, uh, they started even before AI uh, developed to be something, they discussed ethics of AI. We don't have a discussion on ethics of crypto, and uh, we're a day after a, a Sam Bankman frieds uh, trial, the beginning of his trial. So it's interesting. In my uh, daily work, I'm the legal counsel of State Capital, which is a VC and a group, uh, a, a ma major European VC that invests in a lot of uh, Web3 uh, projects. Uh, protocols, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and I'm also responsible to a few DAOs, advising a few DAOs in the DeFi space, and I so, and I also am also a researcher in the university, writing on anarchism. So the things that I, I see, the things that the the things are really connected. So what I'm telling you, and the, and the thoughts that I'm I will now tell you are coming from actually daily daily decisions or non decisions uh, because. Many I'm solving problems, and the problems are arising from wrong decisions, not taking decisions, um, not legal, but mainly, I think, ethical, mainly uh, values. And so we need to actually look on the past and see where, where we came from. When, when, when I thought about Bitcoin, I started uh, with Bitcoin in 2010, very early. I knew Bitcoin, and the first thing I saw on Bitcoin, or two things were, were two, were those. One, it's a radical idea of money that is challenging social structures. Second, is a, a cutting edge technology that enables all this, and no one can stop this, decentralization, et cetera, et cetera. All this, you know, was Bitcoin, and that's why I think it succeeded. But then, is it a movement? You know, people tend to say that uh, Bitcoin started from a uh, cryptography, a uh, movement in cryptography, or a uh, movement in uh, regards to private money, etc. cetera. Uh, but those are not actually movements. So those are developments, technological developments. Maybe private money is a bit uh, more theoretical. Um, but obviously, Bitcoin in the white paper, and, and after that, people claim that it's Grow, uh, you know, it was growing out of the two, 2008 crisis, etc. So if we look back on the history and if we look, uh, people called us anarchists and there was the cyberpunk vision and uh, obviously it was connected to anarchism. When we look on anarchism, when, uh, when we look at, uh, on uh, cases of anarchism, anarchism, anarchism in the past, like the Paris Commune, the uh, Spain Civil War, uh, writers, thought leaders of our anarchism, we can recognize those values. Uh, values of uh, direct mass intervention, intervention collective uh, solidarity, uh, equality, materialism, spontaneous, spontaneously self-governance, and obviously we can see also decentralization. When, and you know, you know that those values seem very familiar, like we see them, you know, arising each and every day. People are speaking about uh, self-governance, at least, uh, about uh, uh, collective solidarity and direct mass intervention, but also about decentralization. Um, when we speak about decentralization, you know, those cases were uh, like the civil, uh, Spanish Civil War was almost uh, 150 years ago. Uh, Decentralization there, what was the meaning of decentralization there? So it was there, but there was no technology. What was this decentralization? The decentralization there was actually communication between different communities, federated communities, communities that were everywhere, that started to agree on the same values and to connect between them not under some hierarchical order or some structure, some social structure. Of course, after that, they were crushed by those 
social structures, structures that we know today. Okay, and if I'm going deeper into one of these wa values, decentralization, so what is it today? Decentralization today, it's a bit different because we have technology and it's one of the core pillars of Bitcoin. Decentralization in today's, in today's meaning means actually an infrastructure, means actually an infrastructure, technological infrastructures that enable, enable us to connect. So it's quite different from the past. In the past, we were, we, we need, we were need to agree. It was required to agree, to discuss, to discuss on a much wider uh, 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 values, proposals, etc. But today, under the technological decentralization and in the information age, we can actually agree about much more minimal, much more minimal proposal. So people can cooperate and people can build a complex enterprise and get to an agreement and agreeing about a minimal value. Like, think about, I'm from Israel, okay, the, the, peace, the peace agreements, in, with the, the, the situation in Israel, when we want to make peace with the Arabs, it's so complex. There are so many, so many things to agree on. So many, so many problems, so many, it will take so much time, and when the time passes, it became, it became it's becoming more and more complex. So, but when we speak about blockchain and when we look on a blockchain and we look on this, the decentralization in blockchain, we can see that people are agreeing on, uh, on a much more minimal value. So people want to invest in gaming. So people want to have a better yield. So people want to, I don't know, those enterprises were lost, but during the ICO time, they wanted to share electricity, to share a, to share a, a computing power, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but today, it was, it's more crystallized, and we can see that people are agreeing on, on, on a minimal value proposal and working together in order to achieve it, raising huge funds of money, and it's amazing. What's also happening today is that those people could be from all around the world, okay? We, should, we are not different communities in Russia that are agreeing about communism. We are different. We are totally different from each other and we are anonymous to a certain level. So I don't need to know you in order to agree with you on the same value. And this is, uh, 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 I think, an enormous innovation between people. Of course, it's bringing to a collective action and also to a different allocation of resources. So it's a dual reflection. When we look on enterprises today, and those are just an examples, we have like a implementation of things that I can recognize as anarchists value. In the dice stability mechanism, in the Uniswap DAX model, in Curve's decision, DAO decision making, in each and every of those enterprises, you have some anarchistic value, anarchistic value that you can rec that you can recognize. I don't know if people thought about them. I don't know if it was just happening because of the phenomenon. And what we can learn from anarchistic histor historical uh, uh, from uh, from the development of anarchistic ideas is also is also interesting so uh, there is a question if our id should be only decentralized but will, should also bring to some other values from the list i showed you before like for example a collective action how much it should be collective how much it should be uh, against the social order breaking those social structures that we all know. Merging those things, uh, there is a question actually, what we can also learn from the crash uh, of those, the crash of those, the end of those uh, uh, anarchistic uh, anarchistic cases that, that have been before. So what we can learn, why they crashed, why those social structures that we know today crashed those, those opportunities for a change. What was happening? So 
when we look on those things colluding, we can see actually that uh, we can check actually what are the values. In each, in each and every enterprise that I see today, in each and every decision, I see values arising. So whether we are deciding to allocate money, to allocate the grant to this and these people, whether the DAO is deciding together, or whether people are still controlling in, on some assets, whether how much deep is the decentralization, how much we are loyal to this decentralization, okay? Most, I would tell you, I'm working with DAOs, most of the DAOs that I see are not decentralized at all, okay? And I can break them into pieces and show you how much they are not decentralized. It could be, you know, the people that are holding the tokens. It could be the people that are controlling the wallets. It could be uh, some transactions that were to, to some unknown places also. So I've seen these cases all around the history, all around the phenomena all the time. And you can see the regulation that is coming that still don't know how to deal with those parts, for example. So I claim that people could have much better decisions if their decisions would come out of specific consciously, out of specific values, okay? If I truly believe in, this, in the decentralization and I see it, I can decide right or left according to those, to those things. And my, ethic decision, my ethics decision could be a more beneficial to the enterprise. And there is a question, are we just reacting to the stream, like all of us are moving from blockchain to AI to uh, quantum computing for, it, for almost 14 years? I see these movements all the time, from the ICO to a different, oh, suddenly we are all DeFi. DeFi was new for me, but uh, you know, you've seen it all the time. So are we are just uh, like uh, jellyfish that are jellyfish that are moving uh, with the hot uh, stream, you know, just to the place that uh, we need to be and then just live there. Or we are some kind of uh, revolutionary people that are inventing. And what is the meaning of being innovative? Maybe it's being revolutionary in some way. And how we could be revolutionary, how we could be innovative I guess if we, are, if we will stick to the values that we know. And then we will do this also from according to an obligation, a social obligation that we have. I, if we, were, if we, were, we, ra we raise money, like $20 million, $30 million, etc., uh, most of the people will think that they have a lot of rights. Yeah, we, built a, we were building a great enterprise. We have a lot of rights. How many of, the, of those people will feel, will feel that they have also obligations? And obligations for what? Obligations for what? You know, I've been in a, um, participi participating in a panel about Cody's Law, and I was the only person who said, I don't know why I said it, like, what about conscious? What about, understand, what about the conscious of the entrepreneurs? Whether, for example, the Tornado Cash people, you know, there were small developers, they had an innovative ID. I'm asking where there were consciousness when they, you know, enabled those, this opportunity. Did they know what will happen? Did they think? Did they invest time in thinking what will happen? What, the, what were the values that pushed them to open this opportunity, to build it? Whether it was decentralization, whether it was a freedom of hierarchy, breaking some structures, or maybe there was something else also that uh, made them turn to the left and not to the right, to the right and not to the left, maybe backward, I don't know. Um, yeah. Right on time. If you have questions about everything, I would love to answer. Thank you.